ready for probably the most boring topic in the world of being an artist. Um, and it's the idea of copywriting your work. Now it's boring, but it's pretty important. So let's, let's talk about it first of all. So I have to start with this, that I know a lot of you are not in the United States. So what I'm about to tell you is what I know about copyrights and I only know them in the United States. So I don't know about the laws and I'm not a lawyer, but I just want to share with you the information I have and I want to um, share with you the experiences I've had um, and some of the solutions to the problems that I've, I've gone through with the Copyright Office. Now the Copyright Office is in America, in the USA, it's in Washington, DC. It's in the Library of Congress. That's what it's called, Library of Congress. If you Google copyright my artwork and you find a company that is going to copyright your artwork for you for a fee, um, I'm guessing, because I've never used them, but I'm guessing they earn a profit. So you don't have to pay somebody that profit, but you do have to pay to register your work. So if you go straight to the Library of Congress, you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to do that and how to educate yourself completely as much as as much information as you need. But I'm going to show you that um, in just a bit. So hang in there. I know this is boring. <clears throat> There's no art being created in this video, um, and I hope you can use this information. So first, uh, let's talk about why you copyright something. The, well, first of all, let's talk about the copyright itself. If you create a work of art, the moment you create it, you own the copyright. How about that? So I'm sitting here in my room, and I draw a picture. It's mine. I just made something that I own the copyright to. Now, let's say I put that picture on the internet and some guy across town uses that picture for his magazine article without asking me, without paying me, without giving me credit. Um, something that just might ruffle my feathers, okay? Um, they have just infringed upon my copyright. Okay, so I call them, write them. I say, hey, you have just used copyrighted work. Let's, let's pretend they're a bad guy. And they say, because they're a bad guy, no, we own the copyright to that. Look at the bottom or something to that nature. And you look at the bottom and they got that little C in a circle and the date and it says their name. So now they have published something with a copyright that identifies the copyright owner as them and not you. That's because they're a bad guy, okay? So now how do you prove that you had the copyright first? That's what the registration is about, okay? Now, there's more than one way to do this. And I would say that if you, if you had a copyright infringement lawsuit and you were going to go to an attorney, the one thing the attorney would ask you is, did you register it with the Copyright Office in Washington, DC? That's gonna be the first question. If you say no, then they're probably going to say, well, do you have proof that you had this first? To which you might be able to say, yes, I published a book and it's in the book. Did you copyright the book with the Copyright Office? No, but the date is on the book and there's, there's a couple of different ways, but just, just maybe to cut through all of those sh like shortcut ways, and shortcut ways also means um, free ways. <laughs> um, I wanna tell you the, the paid way. I wanna tell you probably the best way and the most boring 
subject there is, as as I mentioned. With that said, um, as you know, I do a lot of artwork. My real name is Larry Whitler. I'm not really Papa. But see this book here that I published? This is not a book that I sell. This was a book that I sent out to get work. All right, this is my illustrations. I sent this to different art directors oh, four years ago when I first retired from radio. I wanted to work as, a, as an illustrator and I got work as an illustrator. So what I did was I sent this book out. It's a very small book. I'm going to, I'll tell you how I did this too, by the way. So just to kind of show and tell a little bit, I don't know if you can see the bottom there, right there. Can you see that? It's the copyright notice. If you can't see it, it's basically the copyright symbol, C in a circle, and it says copyright 2020 by Larry Whitler. That's me. Now, the book itself has a little intro, and this is not for the copyright purposes. This is to show you how I landed some jobs as as an illustrator. Um, and then when you go through the book, you will see my illustrations. Okay? So these are some of the illustrations that I was showing off at that time to, to get work as an artist. Mostly I was looking for work as an illustrator for children's books which is what I ended up getting. It's, it's uh, how I got the work that I do. Now, what you see me do on Papa Paints, that's different. That's just me painting cards. And uh, I think sometimes it's confusing because that's not all I do. But anyway, so these are some of the illustrations that I sent to them. And this was how they, and you see here, there's the, more than one on these two pages. And a couple like a, a spot drawing there of a, of a bird bath and yeah, what is this one? Oh, that's the girl cutting the grass the lawnmower <laughs> i like that one <laughs> but anyway <clears throat> so i made this book to show the uh, art directors what i was capable of and the copyright notice in the beginning was so that they knew that nothing in this book is usable without my permission. And I've never had a problem with it, to be honest with you. But I did get some success. And I will tell you this, that in the world of electronic everything, if you send out your resume electronically, and, th and that includes social media, um, it's not going to stick around unless some somebody with a computer decides to save it and i don't think that happens much but if you send a tangible book now this is kind of a different subject in copywriting but i wanted as long as i'm talking about this the the book itself the physical holdable tangible book sits on an art director's desk and it may sit there forever it may sit there for a day or it may sit there off in the corner and never get looked at until one day she looks at it or he looks at it. In my case, the art directors that I work with are all ladies. I wonder why that is. Hmm. <laughs> um, but they look at the art. Eventually they'll say, oh, let me look at this guy's art. And then they'll give us a call. Robin is the person they call. Um, probably in a cover letter probably in a cover letter we gave Robin's information and that's the way I want it because I want her she's more organized than me and she's able to um, like fulfill letter writing and all that cler clerical stuff she's a great artist too by the way but she's just more in her skills in her skill set she's better at that so I, she's the one who uh, they call and our company is bathing no Dean art I don't know if you've ever seen that on our on the description of these videos um, and it's just us just the two of us we're the whole company <laughs> so I do the art of the illustrations okay let's get back to the copyright thing um, so uh, so that was an idea right there so what I did with that one effort was I copyrighted all those pictures with one copyright registration I think it was $45 
And by the way, that's going to be an important question. You're going to want to know how much does this cost? Rather than me trying to tell you everything, I'm going to give you the resources so you can learn it yourself. But take, take away this. If you're not going to watch any more of this video, please, 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 please copyright through the copyright office. Don't do it through a third party because A, they might not be competent. I don't know. I don't know who they are. I know who the Copyright Office is, the Library of Congress. Um, so they might not be competent. They might rip you off. And you just never know. I don't know. I just don't trust them. I just don't trust them. So just for, for that's the main reason. Let's go to the internet. I want to show you some stuff. So let me do this right here. How do I start this thing? Okay, there we go. This is the copyright office right here the website is copyright.gov and um, I'll put some links in the description so you can get to these things quickly but you can see right there that this is what you want to know what visual and graphic artists should know about copyright now you see right here this little thing right here that is a video let me just start it for a second and I'll come back to it. I don't want to play the whole thing because guess what? Their video is copyrighted. But you see that right there? It's, there's the, the thing. And um, I don't know if it has sound on it. I don't hear anything. Um, but I mean, I know it has sound. I just, just don't know if it'll play while I'm trying to record this at, at the same time. Yeah, I, I've watched this before. It does have sound. Oh, and by the way, copywriting art could be for a board game or for a sculpture or for a piece of jewelry, or for a pattern. Copywriting art is not limited to just f fine works of art. And copywriting art can also be your, the, um, the the kindergarten drawing you did, uh, or, your, or your grandson did. That stuff is all copyrightable. All right, so let me stop that video. All right, so let me just read here. Copyright protects the visual arts. This includes paintings, photographs, sculptures, aspects of board games and jewelry just to name a few and then in the video which you can watch yourself um, they discuss what visual works copyright protects what it means to be a copyright holder and how you can register your visual works with the u.s copyright office the copyright office gives a very extensive explanation and what i'm scrolling through right here is that um so you have to let's see there's, there's so many things here to tell you about so trade trademark protection is a completely different thing um just so you know that um typography is ineligible uh, squares circles you, you cannot copyright a square or a circle uh, those, are, those are kind of obvious but i think you kind of know all the, the obvious ones Although your work is protected by copyright from the moment it is fixed, which is what I told you in the beginning, so as soon as you make it, you're copyrighted, the U.S. Copyright Office recommends registering it with us, I'm reading from their site, to make a public record of your ownership, as well as for additional legal benefits, like the ability to bring an infringement claim for U.S. works and to seek certain types of monetary remedies. So let me see if I can go through some of this and try to make it a little bit less boring. And then you can take, take it upon yourself to go to this site and read and read and learn and learn and learn. And it is boring, but it is useful. And it has been a kind of the procedure that we've done. Let me see if I have something I prepared here. All right, this is what I prepared. Um, so this is a, the basic thing right here. To copyright artwork in the United States, you can register with the US Copyright Office through the Library of Congress. Go to the Copyright Office's Electronic Copyright Office, ECO. I'm gonna show you that in a second, so hold on with that one. Step two, fill out the application form and you have to register yourself, your email address and all that stuff. Um, pay the filing fee. I'm going to go to that in a second. Submit a copy of your work and the word copy. You know, submit the actual artwork. 
So you submit a photograph of it, basically. And if it's a sculpture, you have to um, get all the different angles. Top, bottom, left, right, everything. Um, wait for the registrar's office to examine your application, and it's not quick. They take their time. Um, but then you'll receive a certificate of registration if your application is approved. I've never not been approved. Okay, I don't know exactly what I would have to do wrong to not get approved, but I always get approved. Robin has the, Robin has all the files in a, in a folder, and um, like I say, sometimes we copyright a group of works. I think, I think you're allowed to copyright ten with one filing, so that cuts the cost down a lot. Um, let's see the application types. You can submit an online or paper application. That's right, you don't have to do it online. Online applications are faster and have a lower filing fee, which I think that stinks. I really do. I really think it stinks that they make it cheaper to do it one way than the other. That's just them telling you, we're lazy. I'm sorry, government, but that's what you're saying to us. We're lazy and we don't have the time to look at paper. So please put it in an e-form so we can look at it on our computers. I, I'm, I'm being negative right here, I know, but but really truthfully, I mean, there there are some of us who are older, like me, and we're, we're so used to using paper to file things. In fact, when I first started applications for copyrights, it was always paper. There was no e, okay? There was no such thing as e e filing. Um, but that's just that's just them being lazy. But, but you can't change it. You can't fight city hall as this hey. Um, the number and type of copies you need to submit depends on the type of artwork and it's all explained when you do the registration. The processing time, listen to this, the average processing time for a copyright claim is seven months. Seven months! But it can take up to 15 months. 15, I'm telling you, I waited, I, I forgot sometimes what I did and then I will, it'll show up in the mail. I know. But I'm telling you, this is a boring topic and it's a frustrating thing. But it is worth it, ultimately, if somebody steals your work. <sighs> I'll talk to about stealing work in a second, too. Published versus unpublished. For unpublished works, you can group up to 10 pieces of art on, in one registration. That's what I was trying to tell you earlier. And published works need to be submitted individually. Um, registering your artwork can help you prove ownership and it can also give you legal benefits if you need to sue for copyright infringement. Okay, so let's talk about some of these things. Um, I have seen my own work being used and I wrote to the people who were using it on the internet and I never heard from them and I never I, I never had anything remedied. I sent them a cease and desist letter. And I don't know if they made money from my artwork. I don't have any idea. But, but I have, I've seen my own artwork being offered elsewhere. All right, let's look at some of these other things. Oh, and so, so I guess what I'm trying to say is the only thing I could have done was to go to court and, and ask the uh, lawyer and can you imagine the cost of that so I, I guess it's kind of a, a frustrating element of us as artists is that when we create something and we protect it it's really up to us and our ability how do you how do you fight it you know because everybody wants to get paid lawyers want to get paid everybody wants to get paid but there are some remedies that that the um, copyright office gives you but all right, let me find something I wanted to show you. Um, all right, here's the fees. Um, registration of a claim in an original work of authorship. They call a painting. They call you, they don't call you the artist, they call you the author. You're the, you're the creator of the work. So it's $45, as long as it's not for hire, and I, I'll have to touch that topic too. Um, the uh, the electronic filing is forty five dollars. The standard application is sixty five. The paper filing, one hundred twenty five dollars. 
I honestly don't know the difference between standard application and single author, same claimant, one work, not for hire, and standard. I don't really understand the difference there. Registration of a claim in a group of unpublished works, that's the 10 pictures, that's $85. Um, and then you can see the rest of these categories here and how much each of them costs you. Registration of updates or revisions to a database that predominantly consists of non-photographic works, $500. Yikes. Look at some of these prices. Look at some of these prices. So I'm not telling you it's cheap and I'm not telling you it's fun. I am telling you it's probably good for you. But let's talk real quickly about um, works for hire. So when I do work for a publisher, they hire me to do artwork. I then have an opportunity to negotiate with the publisher. So if they, if a work for hire typically means that they pay me and they own the copyright, which means I have no right to that artwork after I'm done with it. However, <clears throat> if you're working with a good publisher, that publisher will say, you can use the work for your own self. You can use the work to promote your own art. Um, you might even be able to sell, you might even be able to work a deal where you can sell prints. Let, let's say you, let's say you illustrate a children's book and you want to retain the copyright or share the copyright with the publisher. So let's, let's say, oh, I don't know, the cat who crossed the ocean. So that's, that's a book I illustrated. Okay. Robin wrote it. I illustrated it. So it's between us, right? So that's an easy one because it's between us, but it's could It could be between you and somebody else that you don't know who is friendly, who is nice, who is fair. And you can say, okay, I want to retain the copyright. What that, what I'm trying to say is that you can sell the book. You can use all the, all of the works and sell the book. And I won't, I won't have any right to claim that you're using my work because we have a deal, right? You have, you have said to me, you're going to pay me to do these illustrations. I'm telling you, great. You can use them, but you're telling me, you're giving me permission to use my own work f to sell prints. I can't sell the book, but I can sell prints that I like from the book. Okay. Um, to be honest, that's, has it ever happened? No, I don't think so. I don't think that's ever actually happened, but it probably has happened to people who have worked for, um, some of the bigger publishers. I think the people who work for Disney, they have their hands tied. They don't own any of those copyrights. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure. Um, and that's not to say, uh, um, character development. If you are developing a character, Mickey Mouse is the best example. Um, you develop a character that is reproducible, any recognizable character, um, SpongeBob SquarePants, uh, Beavis and Butthead, um, Mickey Mouse, any character that's recognizable, that is a trademark, copyright and a trademark. So. If you do that, make sure you register those things. And definitely make sure you register those things. Um, is there anything else on here that I want to share with you? Oh, okay. Here's the E. Can I move this around? How do I, how do I move this around to show you? Okay. This is, this is the copyright. Um, the E copyright here. She so says, right. Welcome Larry. So I started this so I could show you, but I'm not going to actually register a, a work. But if you go over here, register work, standard application, click on that. Um, so this is where I would get the application. Um, the standard application may be used to register most works, including an original work, a derivative work, a collective work, or a compilation. If the Copyright Office determines that your work cannot be registered with the standard application, your claim can be refused. Um, just you, you're going to have to read through all of these things when you're filling out the application. Once, by the way, once you've done one of them, it's, it's really a breeze. It's a pain, 
but it's a breeze. Um, the required fee, let's see what happens if I click that. Online registration help. See, the, and this is part of it too. This is a government agency, and while they frustrate me because they take so long sometimes, and it's so hard to get a straight answer sometimes, but they do have a lot of tutorials. You see the video tutorials here? You can look through them. They do have a lot of information if you just take your time and educate yourself on these things. But I, I urge you, please, 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 do it yourself or sit down with a friend or a partner and sit down with that person and do it together because then one of you might understand something better than the other and you can say well what do you what do they mean by that and the other one figures it out but what i don't want to recommend i do not want to recommend that you go to a company that is charging you to do these things i know some of you may be tempted i know i know it was $45 to register 500 for some of those things. That's the government. That's what you pay the government. So some of these places might charge $50. So they only make a $5 profit. But my guess is it's going to be a lot more than that. And you're not going to get anything more. You've got a brain. You can, you can comprehend this. I promise you. As I said, the first thing I said when I turned on this camera is this is a boring, boring topic. But I also said it's an important topic. So um, I'm going to put a link to these things on the uh, underneath the video here. Um, you'll have to go through them yourself. Uh, here we go. This is a good one. Myths explain copyright essentials. Um, it's it, this is very very useful. Uh, let's see. And learn more. There's a, there's a lot on here. Oh, there's the fees. It's the same thing we saw earlier. So, okay, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, if you are working with a publisher, the publisher will handle the copyright, but please negotiate with the publisher before any of that happens and, and say that at, at the very least, you want to be able to use the work that you've created for them in your portfolio at least retain the right to keep the work in your portfolio otherwise if you illustrate a book that becomes like really successful let's say you publish the next polar express i mean you illustrate the next polar express right if you illustrate that book and it sells gazillion copies you want to be able to show the next publisher that that that's what you did that's the work you did um so just retain the right to use the work at least in a portfolio, um, preferably to be able to use that work to sell um, like limited edition prints and that kind of a thing. Um, I feel like maybe I focus mostly on illustrations, but I mean, even fine works of art, um, a beautiful landscape, you can copyright that and remember you own the copyright from the moment you create it but proving that you own it is the other part of it and there are more there is more than one way to do it as i say you can publish it a different way and then have that date fixed somewhere but truthfully in the united states the best way to register the best way to prove that you own a copyright is by registering it with the library of congress okay all right, I know this was long, I know this was boring, and I know that my content in this video is not comprehensive. What do they say when it's complete? It's not complete, there's so much more. You, you, I said it was boring. Can you imagine if I told you everything in this video? You wouldn't, it, it's just crazy. It's just so much, but truth is, if you do this, and I see like I showed you before, the. Where's the form I started? Uh, well, maybe I undid it. Oh, here's the form. So when you register it, it's going to look like this. If you can get the paper one, I, I've done the paper one many times, but it actually, let me see if I start registration, what does it say? But it actually is, um, okay, so they want to know what type of work it is. Um, 
work of visual arts is where I, what you would click and then you get all this stuff here and and then at, at some point it's going to say um to, it's going to ask you to upload the, the work of art that you're that you're registering okay let's see what happens if i click pay uh, see, it's a, <laughs> that's another frustrating thing with the government you can click on things but they don't always work all right i'm going to give you this uh website if, if nothing else that you take from this please use the copyright office and I apologize to people in Australia, in Ireland, in Denmark, in Germany. Um, we have viewers on this channel from England and South Africa. And, oh gosh, wherever I've seen people from Canada. Um, a lot of you have probably the same concerns. I don't know the answer to how to register in your country. But I'm sure there's a way to find out. Anyway, hopefully this helps. And um, if you fell asleep, wake up. Wake up. You fell asleep. I gave a nice presentation here. What's the matter with you? <laughs> All right, I'm just kidding. All right, thank you. Hopefully this helps.